tackles. Well, of course, we've seen Al Madrill over the last couple of weeks, Steve, really vent a lot of his frustrations on uh, some competitors here on television wrestling. In the arenas, he's continued his war against some of the greats in the sport. And as much as uh, you've got to disagree with what he's got to say and a lot of times what he does in the ring, he's still here, he's still going strong, and he's got a lot of pluses in the win column. Well, as you can see now, he starts out quickly against El Tiano. He's raked those fingers across the back. Oh, he's really put some scars on the back of El Tiano. Throws his throat into that top rope, forearm into the back, and now a little choking. And this is the type of match you're going to see from El Madrill. He starts at the opening bell, and he goes until he defeats somebody. He doesn't care how he does it, how he wins. All he wants to do is win. Doesn't make any difference if he breaks bones or whatever. Well, a lot of times, uh, I know I've sat and listened to Al Madrill talk about uh, his... Al Madrill now pitching El Tejano out to the floor, and Madrill follows behind him. No matter what he says about how scientific a wrestler he has, at least from what he's shown us here in the last couple of weeks, he's abandoned even any pretense of scientific wrestling. Madrill now drilling Tejano into the wooden barrier that separates the ring from the crowd, and it looks to me like El Tejano's in serious trouble, Steve. Well, El Madrill knows that he's out here to show people like Pedro Aguayo and Ricky Vera, Bob Sweet and Rick Casey, Bruiser Brody, Tiger Conway, Rick, uh, you know, he's out here to show them all. Well, of course, uh, television is the medium that provides for that, at least in the sport of professional wrestling. And Madrill may be sending a message to a couple of competitors like this. He's certainly got his work cut out for him because as we talked about at the opening of this hour of the all-new Lone Star Wrestling, some of the great El Tejano from somewhere finds the intestinal strength to fire back on Al Madrill. He caught him a couple of good licks at back Madrill into the corner, but uh, just didn't have what it takes to put this uh, Madrill back to the canvas. Madrill comes up, locks that left arm of Al Tejano. Todd Johnson checks to make sure that uh, Al Tejano doesn't want to give up, and I thought he might at first, but he doesn't, and I think he says that Madrill might have pulled the hair, and he may have. He did it away from us, and he goes down again quickly, and this may have been a little trunk pulling. Well, referee Todd Johnson certainly uh, hard-pressed to keep uh, an eye on Al Madrill during this match. As we said before, stars from all over the world are on their way. Tommy Rich is on his way. We'll be seeing Chavo Guevara. Of course, Bruiser Brody will be here next week. We'll take a look at him a little bit later in the show. Stars of a magnitude that is just unprecedented in our sports, Steve, and it's just a great moment for the wrestling fans now that Lone Star Wrestling is here today. Al Tiano down, Al Madrill on top. He gets a two count from the referee. Oh, did he pop him that time? Woo. Here comes Al Tiano. He catches one in the midsection that makes him do a somersault. And Madrill now sweeping into the legs in one of the most unique applications of the figure four that I've ever seen. He goes from the inside. And Todd Johnson calling for the bell. El Tejano just can't take the pressure, Steve. Now Madrill with a figure four leg lock. That's won world championships and a lot of regional and state championships for a lot of professional wrestlers. The one that comes to my mind the quickest, the world championships won by the Funks with the figure four leg lock. And, of course, the spinning goal. Jack Crisco was a great one at that. And here they slide out of the ring. El Madrill, the winner over El Tejano. Stay tuned because we'll be back right after this. The new Lone Star Wrestling at the City Coliseum here in Austin on Sunday, April the 21st, 8 o'clock starting time. Great lineup. It's headlined by Mr. Power Driver Bob Sweeten and then Ricky Vera teaming up against El Madrill and Hacksaw Higgins. The Southwest Tag Team titles on the line as the Maoris defend that title against Rick Casey and Chicky Star. Dusty Woods beats Mad Max. The Midgets in town. Little Coco against Little Tokyo. One other exciting match. That action at the City Coliseum, Austin, Sunday, April the 21st, 8 o'clock starting time. Don't miss the action with Lone Star Wrestling. Mr. Piledriver, you and Enrique Vera team up against El Madrill and Hacksaw Higgins. You know, I couldn't ask for anybody better than Enrique Vera to be my partner because this man's going to be my corner. He's going to 
If you watch my back, I don't have anything to worry about except the two gentlemen we oppose. The new Al Madrill, the smarter Al Madrill, the Al Madrill that puts everybody down and figures he's that much better than everybody else. Well, this will be a test. We'll find out exactly how tough he is. We know how tough his partner, Hacksaw Higgins, is. He's a giant of a man. He's big, he's strong, he's vicious, he's nasty. But I have a partner I think that can overcome. I think it's going to be a very good tag match, and I feel that Ricky and myself are going to come out victorious, too. And Ricky Vera. Pues hablamos aquí a todos mis paisanos, esperando que nos apoyen. Voy a demostrarle a ese Madrid, a ese Madrid que anda hablando como comadre, parece verdulera. Habla y dice que él es bueno, está trayendo un grandote. Muy... Pero lo que tienen de grandote los tienen de semillones y que lo demuestren arriba de un ring. Well, that Hacksaw Higgins, he's a giant. Al Madrill, he's, he's changed. He's a big man. Al Madrill has changed. Al's a big man, too. They're going to be a very vicious team to handle. But I feel with this man in my corner, we're going to overcome any... Any advantages they might have, I feel very confident. I've got a lot of things to settle with Al Madrill and Hacksaw Higgins. He figures he's because he's six foot six or six foot seven, three hundred and some pounds. He can run roughshod over everybody. Well, let me tell you something, gentlemen. You're big, you're tough, you're strong, but you can still be dropped on your head. Remember at all times when you're in that ring. Remember the wrath of the pile driver. All that stars that you haven't seen in a while, they are the greatest stars in professional wrestling, Rick. Well, still a little bit later this hour, you'll be getting your first look at the new creation of uh, the manager by the name of Slick. He's called Mad Max. He's a little bit later this hour. Plus, uh, in just a couple of minutes, we'll get a look at uh, King Kong Bruiser Brody. We'll take a look at uh, Chavo Guerrero and several other stars all to come in the next 60 minutes. Uh, they're on their way, Steve, some of the finest talent in pro wrestling. That's right, of course, where you want to remember Tiger Conway Jr. Tommy Rich and much, much more. And speaking of Bruiser Brody, Lone Star Wrestling has a gut Bruiser Brody right now. We pick him up in St. Louis, Missouri. He's in a handicap match. Well, of course, uh, with a man like Bruiser Brody, there's really only one thing you can do. Not one, but two men. Now from St. Louis, Missouri, we'll go to ring announcer Frank Garagiola and take a look at the man himself. Get ready for a handicap rules with King Kong Bruiser Brody. Fall 30 minutes. It's handicap rules. King Kong Bruiser Brody taking on two young men in the form of Dick Young and Tom Johnson. Of course, the referee is Steve Brown. This match filmed in St. Louis, Missouri, just after an Oriental tour from Bruiser Brody. His first appearance in the States in quite some time. A uh, very unusual situation. Well, not really unusual when you talk about Bruiser Brody. But for the average wrestler, to take on not one but two opponents at the same time would have to be uh, what you would call a very very precarious situation but with uh, Bruiser Brody and his desire and his physical and athletic abilities not very strange indeed when you stop to think that uh, very few men on their own can uh, much less even stay with much less defeat Bruiser Brody a two-on-one situation an interesting turn of events for Bruiser Brody and now against Tom Johnson out of Los Angeles California the Brody uh, Easily slamming a 235-pound man so far. Tom Johnson with not even a chance to tag the Dick Young. And Young never even gets a chance to get in the ring under his own steam as Brody snatches him over the top ropes. And here you see some of the trademark maneuvers of Bruiser Brody when he plants those size 13 feet in the face of whoever is unfortunate enough to get in his way. It's uh, a very definite situation that calls for sometimes a little attention at ringside. Brody now out on the floor following uh, Dick Young back into the ring. And Bruiser Brody, as anyone who's ever seen him inside the squared circle knows, is that his most dangerous and his best when he climbs outside the ropes and heads for the floor of the arena. A lot of the uh, officials of the various wrestling alliances don't see eye to eye with him on it, but uh, Bruiser Brody certainly makes his mark outside on the floor. The fans know it, and certainly the men who square off against him in the ring know it. Brody now 325 pounds down across the face of Dick Young. The lateral press are covered, and the referee Steve Brown doesn't even get to a count of two before Brody jerks Dick Young back up off the canvas, much to the delight of the fans here at ringside. A capacity crowd on hand in St. Louis to watch this unique event as uh, we see Tom Johnson now back in action against Bruiser Brody aside, headlock, and Johnson a couple of ineffectual right hands that uh, maybe straighten Brody up, but certainly don't do anything to uh, unsettle this athlete. Now, both Young and Johnson trying their luck at Bruiser Brody as Steve Brown tries to maintain some kind of order in the ring, a difficult 
thing to do, especially when you've got to deal with the likes of Bruiser Brody. Brody now not even waiting for the tag. Beating Dick Young in over the top rope, and Young uh, barely able to stay up on his feet. Brody a good six, seven feet up in the air with a beautiful flying drop kick. A lot of people tend to think of Bruiser Brody more as a brawler than a wrestler, but he'll surprise you. He'll come out with maneuvers that you never thought, and you can look at the, the impact that Brody's left foot made across the head of Dick Young. You can watch his neck snap back, and I'm sure right now that Dick Young has got absolutely no idea where he is, except that he is in a very bad situation against a man who maybe he shouldn't have signed to meet at all. Brody now perched up on the second rope. He stands Hands ready and waiting. And there you see Bruiser Brody diving knee first into the upper chest of Dick Young. I believe the pinfall is going to be just a mere formality now. Uh, Brody not satisfied with one victory now. Takes after Tom Johnson. And you can see the impact that just slung Johnson to the canvas. Uh, neither man ever had a chance to mount any kind of offense at all against Bruiser Brody. And Brody heads one more time to the floor, maybe as a little reminder of this Tom Johnson, just exactly what he's capable of, not only inside, but outside the ring as well. Bring it out to Frank Garagiola heading for cover as Bruiser Brody heads in the ring with a chair, a winner in no time, flat. You gentlemen ready, ready to go. Tag team action. We get our first look at Dennis Dulay from Quebec, Canada and from Florida, Frankie Lane. They're going up against 295 pounds, Doug Taylor and Paul Kelly. Of course, uh, Dennis Goulet, young French Canadian there in the red trunks, makes the tag to his partner, Frankie Lane. Two up and coming stars in the sport, as is Paul Kelly. Our first look, of course, at Frankie Lane. I uh, mentioned last week that I'd heard some good reports on him from in and around the Carolinas and several other places. And uh, from what I've heard, he really certainly lives up to the reputation he's got. Goulet. Hey, I like that Goulet. He come in there, got that hip toss, and he brought Kelly off the road. Now, Tug Taylor comes in, and Tug locks that shoulder on Dennis Goulet and the 295 pound Clinton. Now, a Tug Taylor. But, uh, shut down Dennis Goulet in a hurry. Tug Taylor, certainly the veteran in this match. He's got the years of experience. He managed to block the body slam attempt from Goulet. And now brings Goulet up to the, from the canvas with a body slam of his own. Tug Taylor at 290 pounds, certainly not a kind of a man to fool around with. Taylor whips Goulet under the ropes, catches him with that big forearm as he bounced him off the ropes, grabs him by the hair, and goes back to the shoulder. He's got a keyed lock right on the shoulder, and boy, that puts a lot of pressure. Chuck Taylor definitely with the advantage now on Dennis Goulet, and you know Goulet's mind's got to be turning uh, how to get out of this long arm lock. And as you see, Taylor right there, the mark of the veteran, shooting in those short forearms that uh, really got to take a lot out of Dennis Goulet. There's a knee to the midsection of Dennis Goulet. Goulet trying to turn around, trying to see where Frankie Lane is. I'd like to tag out. Now here comes Paul Kelly from New York. Throws one to the rib cage. The referee is George Stevens. Goulet trying to get over there to tag out to Frankie Lane. He couldn't quite get to through the shoulder and knocks Goulet down. This time, Goulet steps in, has a hip toss, gets another one, and Paul Kelly, whoop, say, I don't want to be here. He's found himself definitely in a bad situation. A very unique arm drag takedown from Dennis Goulet. He makes the tag to his partner, Frankie Lane, and Lane is right there, right back on the left arm of Paul Kelly. It seems like uh, the left arm may be the focus for both teams in this match, Steve. Now, well, the shoulder of Paul Kelly is locked up by Lane. Kelly tags out with the right hand, and in comes Doug Taylor. Taylor grabs Lane. Oh, they collide. There's a cross-body block, and Taylor just staggers back, picks up Lane, and slams him to the mat. Doug Taylor, a tremendously powerful athlete, and if Lane and Goulet hope to get a win in this match, they've got to figure out some way around the phenomenal strength of Tug Taylor. You see the forearm that sent Lane's feet completely out from underneath him. And of course, Paul Kelly uh, has just now reached the point where he is able to compete with all veterans in our sport. He uh, is starting to show the ring generalship and the finesse that's so uh, necessary for a successful career in pro wrestling. An excellent and very dangerous partner for Tug Taylor. Frankie Lane may have a sunset flip here. Only a one count, I believe. Right, one count. Here comes Dennis Goulet, Quebec, Canada, 230 plus pounds. 
says he's got to first look at him, and he looks tough. Right now he drops to his knees as Kelly puts those forearms in there and now lays one to the side of the jaw. You're watching Lone Star Wrestling coming to you from the junction in San Antonio, Texas. Of course, uh, Goulet, with his French-Canadian background, has got a tremendous reputation to follow throughout the years. French-Canadian athletes, especially in the sport of pro wrestling, have dominated the sport. Taylor, uh, introducing them the hard way to Texas wrestling, just drilling Goulet's forehead into the ring apron that surrounds the squared circle. Now, Goulet now... Back into the ring, Paul Kelly's right there. Kelly lays one to the side of the jaw. Kelly reaches in, has Goulet up for a slam. Kelly goes to the ropes, dives in there with a knee. That's right under the head of Dennis Goulet, and it could be all over as Kelly drops another knee in there. And let's see, Kelly goes for the pin. There's a count of two, and Dennis Goulet kicks out as Kelly didn't grab that leg. So far, a tremendous tag team match between these two teams still to come this hour. We'll be taking a look at the Lord Humongous, at Mad Max, Chavo Guerrero, Maniac Mark Lewin, and many more of your favorite stars. You stick through the 60 minutes of Lone Star Wrestling. Doug Taylor, now he's on the right shoulder of Dennis Goulet. Now, uh, of course, Goulet trapped in the corner of Paul Kelly as Kelly raises his hands to so show he's not interfering. Goulet! A couple of right hands that are starting to back out. Taylor, he's through. He's made the tag of Frankie Lane. Oh, what a drop kick. Down goes Taylor. In comes Kelly. Lane stays right with Kelly. What's in the room? There's a double drop kick. As Goulet has come in, that puts Kelly outside the ring. Now, Chuck Taylor comes in. What are they going to do with him? They whip him into the rope. The double drop kick. Down goes 295 pounds. Chuck Taylor. And here is the famous spinning toehold. And Frankie Lane has him on Tug Taylor, as he can see. I believe he's given up the referee signal for the belt. And we've got a fantastic win for the new team of Dennis Goulet and Frankie Lane. Lane taken with that, that spinning toehold. What a match. I know these two young guys have got to be excited, Steve. Uh, nice match. Frankie Lane, Dennis Goulet as they defeat Tug Taylor and Paul Kelly. Stay tuned because we'll be back with Enrique Barra. Right after them. Al Madrill has come to the ring. It's supposed to be Rudy Gonzalez uh, to take on Enrique Vera, Rick, but uh, Al Madrill is there, and the best I could tell you is motioning before the cameras came on that he had bought out the contract of Rudy Gonzalez who was detained somewhere tonight. Well, we had, a, we had a lot of confusion at very start right before we came back on the air. The security people forced Madrill back to the dressing room until he could actually produce the contract itself. They've allowed this match to go on. So now I guess we've got Al Madrill and Enrique Vera. Well, I don't think that Al Madrill knew. Well, he probably did know that Rudy was going to wrestle. In Ricky Vera, and even though he don't want to get into the ring with Vera at this point, probably, he wants to show the people that he'll take on anybody. Madrill with a reverse arm drag as sends uh, Vera out through the bottom ropes, of course. And Rick Vera, one of the uh, all-time legends in pro wrestling south of the border, all through South America and uh, Central America. This man has made a fantastic reputation for himself. Madrill again shoots up to a half Nelson and comes out with that, uh, what you'd have to call a reverse arm drag on Vera. Seems maybe be frustrating uh, Enrica just a little bit. Well, there goes Vera down now. I mean, Madrill down now. Vera turns things around. He does it across the border in Mexico, and he can do it in the United States. That line on there is the line of Jalisco, one of the states of Mexico. And certainly he carries his country's uh, pride with him everywhere he goes. And the fans all across North America have really taken them to his heart here. In the last uh, six to eight months, he's been campaigning in North America. Madrill works his way out of a Vera arm lock in typical Madrill fashion by going to the ropes. Well, that's about the only way he could get out of there. And he knows that he's got the referee in there on his side. If he goes to the ropes, he's going to get a break. Now they might punch it out a little bit. Madrill will throw the punch, and I know Vera will too. It's around the area of the eyes. He breaks those fingers. There's that punch to the side of the jaw, puts Enrique Vera down. Well, the situation between Al Madrill and Enrique Vera has been building throughout the past couple of weeks. They've met in the arenas all across the country. 
And uh, I guess it had to come down to this, the start of a showdown on television, Steve. Well, Al Madrill out here earlier and now laying out to Otto. And now he comes up and he's got his hands full with Enrique Vera. And he's standing right away as he throws Vera into the steel post that supports one of the corners. And Vera now obviously injured uh, possibly a chest muscle, maybe his left arm as he went into that steel post. Madrill, ignoring the referee, comes right behind him with a tremendous right hand. And Al Madrill is going all out against Enrique Vera trying to jam him into the turn post but Vera I guess just too strong for Madrill to get him where he wanted him couldn't get him turned around like he wanted him now he takes his hair and slams his head into that mat and now he rakes the fingers around across the eye the referee Todd Johnson gets him to break it four and now he's trying to get him in the ring and finally Al Madrill does make his way into the ring Rich Stark and Steve Stack here at ringside Lone Star Wrestling we hope you enjoy it and in the weeks and months to come we can bring you the finest talent not only from the great state of Texas, not only from the United States of America, but from all across the world, Lone Star Wrestling will be bringing the absolute best in professional wrestling talent. We want to invite the fans out to the arenas when we come live. Just watch for Lone Star Wrestling because the excitement is the best in professional wrestling. Madrill now with the advantage on Vera, gouging the eyes of this Mexican superstar. Vera reversing Madrill into the turnbuckle. And with the things that Al Madrill has had to say, not only about... Uh, the, the Mexican heritage of a lot of people in the United States, but uh, disallowing or, or just trying to ignore his own roots has certainly started a fury and a furious feud between himself and one in Rick Rivera. Rivera grabs the head of Madrill, slams it into the mat. Rivera warned about using the hair, but he doesn't care at this point because his hair has been pulled so many times in this match already. He just turned it around. Oh, did he throw him in there that time? Well, there's an old saying in pro wrestling, what goes around comes around. My good friend Ken Lucas, one of his favorite uh, axioms, and it certainly stands true for Al Madrill in this match. Vera's only given back what he got. Madrill grabs Vera by the arm, throws him across the ring. There's a shoulder. Oh, that knocks Madrill down. Here comes and Ricky Vera after him. Madrill's ready with a hip toss. Madrill comes with a boot. Well, these two superstars are battling it out here on Lone Star Wrestling. Look at that move from Vera. What a block from Enrique Vera now up with the leapfrog. He catches Al Madrill with a monkey flip off the ropes. And these two have been going at it. Hey, wait a minute. Vera drops down. Madrill down to the canvas. He may have hit his head on the cement floor here at the uh, junction in San Antonio. He may be completely unconscious, Steve. I'll tell you what. Oh, Madrill's up. Here comes Vera. Madrill moves because he knows one of those moves those Mexican wrestling stars have. They fly between the ropes, over the ropes, out into the crowd. So Madrill hid behind a post to get away from Enrique Vera. Well, it wasn't three weeks ago that we saw Vera knock a wrestler into the third row of chairs here with just that same maneuver. So obviously Al Madrill has been watching the tapes. He's been studying Enrique Vera, planning and plotting for just this one moment. Madrill finally makes his way back, and now he's begging. He may be even speaking a little Spanish, though he claims not to be Spanish. He may just have to break down to keep Enrique Vera off him for just a second. But I don't believe that Enrique Vera, after the things that have been said and the things that have been done inside the ring, Steve, is going to have any part of Al Madrill's apologies. Madrill still trying to talk Vera into uh, let's shake hands, you know, and be friends. But I know what's going to happen. Madrill's going to try to sneak in one of those sucker punches. He didn't get to do it, but he comes raking the eyes for him to the back. Turns it around. Oh, he's digging at the eyes. And certainly uh, Vera's, Vera's got to be experiencing some trouble in his vision right now. Todd Johnson trying to keep Madrill out of his open and blatant violation of the rules as Vera comes back and gouges a little eyes on his own. Now Todd Johnson trying to keep him going straight here, but there's a little slamming the head into the turnbuckle. There takes the head of Madrill. Now what's he going to do with it? And Al Madrill firing. Wait a minute. Both men colliding. Uh, a body tackle attempt by Al Madrill that sent uh, Vera down to the back of his head and Madrill to the canvas as well. Vera's up. He's across his man one. And Al Madrill just barely away at the count of two. Slams ahead of Enrique Vera into the mat. Madrill grabs him. Whips him across the ring, gets in front, flips him over, stomps him in the midsection. What's Madrill going to do here? Oh, is he going for the figure four leg lock? Yes, he has it locked on. 
Now Madero the figure four late lock. There it is. Oh, look at the pain showing on the face of Enrique Vera. And Enrique Vera in absolute agony. You can hear him shouting all the way across, all the way across this arena as he tries to hold on against the figure four leg lock. It's the only way out of this, Rick, is trying to reverse it. Can he, he do it? He's got it. He yes, reverses. indeed. All the pressure now is on Al Madrill. All coming down on that one knee of Al Madrill, and he may have to give up, Steve. Uh, I don't know whether I thought he signaled he gave up, but uh, so far the referee says no. The match has continued. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here comes Slick. And now, hey, who's this? Slick, Hacksaw, Higgins, and, uh, and somebody. I don't know who that is. Slick has got somebody out here. We'll find out for you. I've never seen this guy before. Here comes. Oh, they closed line right in the midsection. Here goes Hacksaw Higgins. Look at this guy. And Enrique Rivera is in serious trouble now as Slick keeps the referee pinned in the corner. Oh, he got him on the shoulder. He made the yeah, He's going for that gut wrench that we saw him use last week here on Lone Star Wrestling. And now as uh, Slick's other man is up on the second rope. Wait a minute. Here comes the coming out there, going after the drill, and after whatever his name is, and Hacksaw Higgins already bailed out, the referee is gone, he's out on the floor, there goes Enrique Vera after the drill, he's chasing down the aisle, what, what a fight this is, we got a, hopefully we can find out something from these guys about exactly what's going on, Rick Casey, Chicky Star, and Enrique Vera are in the ring, they're still ready to fight, but it looks like uh, it looks like Slick and his crew are making their way up here to uh, to us, Steve. I don't I don't know exactly what's going on. Here's, here's Slick. It ain't happening anywhere, baby. All the husbands as well. The Tolly Blanchard, the Gino Hernandez. Where's the competition, baby? Where's the Bruiser Brody? Where's the Tweed Tan? I got 40 contracts. Over there on that desk, baby. I'll tell you what, Steve. Where are yeah, you? Yeah, you think you got friends, Enrique Vera? Well, I got friends, too. Look at these monsters I got here. Anytime you want in Mexican, you get your friends. You get Bob Sweet and you get Star. You get Casey. I don't care who you get. You get your six men. And I'll tell you what, baby. For these two monsters here, we'll take care of them all. That's Mad Max. Mad Max, baby. Look, that's Mad Max there, baby. Right up, baby. Oh, that is, ladies and gentlemen. Anytime they're ready, Steve. We're ready, baby. This is nothing. Look at him there. He's crying now. He needs help. Well, I don't need no help. You have a help. Here I got it, ladies and gentlemen, because Lone Star Wrestling will continue right after this. You have We're seeing stars from all over the world right now. We're going to take a look at two separate incidents involving a man no stranger to Texas fans, Maniac Mark Lewin. First with my good friend Gordon Soli in Florida. Later in an arena match in the islands of Hawaii. Two very controversial matches with Maniac Mark Lewin. And after the Maniac, ladies and gentlemen, Chavo Guerrero makes appearance here. You'll see Chavo in the match with his brother Hector. Let's take a look. The first man to get to his feet will win the match. Listen to that noise, that uproar, that tremendous ringing here as Jose starts up. Listen to it. Everybody's on the edge of their seat, all standing up. They are clenching their fists. They are screaming. They are pulling their hair. They are howling for their favorite. Jose seems to be the odds-on favorite, but that doesn't mean everybody. It is a bedlam in this place, a bedlam. And you see the fans now as they jump and roar and wave. And Jose managed to lob him right smack in the jaw. The referee was hit in the process as he, as he went back. The referee is not out of the ring. He is in the ring. And he... Jose has managed to pull himself up to his feet and he is going over after. Oh, Chavo Chavo Guerrero. Chavo Guerrero threw something into the face of uh, Jose Lothario and Lothario is down holding his eyes and the 
Hector is up on his feet, and Chavo Guerrero has embraced his brother, but it is Jose Lothario who is in trouble. <coughs> Jose Lothario is down on the canvas. has declared the winner to, to be Hector Guerrero and he is working on on on, on Lothario. and now it's Chavo Guerrero well I'll be doggone and uh, Jose Lothario is taking a lump from Chavo Guerrero and Hector Guerrero in a match that I'll be doggone. And, and the Guerrero brothers right again. And they, Jose is trying to fight his way out, but he's having trouble here, rubbing his eyes. He's, whatever was thrown in his eyes seems to be bothering him more than what's happening to him from the, from the, from the men in the ring. So the, the, the referee was it not. The referee did not see what happened. And remember, there is no disqualification, but there are other ways of getting at people. Jose Lazario having his... Having his and uh, this should be indeed quite a match. Well, Gordon, I'm still really shocked that Angelo Moss, Virginia, was able to break that hole. Uh, I have never seen that done before, and this was the first time, and this is really something to go down on the record book, and he was able to break that hole. It was indeed, and I, I must say this, I have to admire the professional, because it looked to me like Dylan was trying to keep him from uh, taking off that mask, but he was a man of his word, and uh, turns out to be the pro, Les Norton, the man of a thousand and one holes, with right now, the Purple Haze, punishing Barry Windham. This match here is going to be very interesting. Here you have a young Barry Wyndham that is really following in the footsteps of his father. He uh, seems like he's getting bigger and stronger every weekend, but he's really going to have his hands full of the Purple Haze. The Purple Haze, of course, is, uh, like you said, one of Kevin Sullivan's protégés that doesn't have a mind of his own, can't really seem to function without Kevin Sullivan being close by. Kevin Sullivan is throwing a hard right into the stomach of the Purple Haze, but not seeming to really have any effect on him. Purple Haze coming back, just kind of raking the eyes of uh, Barry Wyndham. The Haze now with a chop to the side of the throat, and once again going back to those nerve points on either side of the throat of uh, Barry Wyndham. Kevin Sullivan continues to stay at ringside. Our referee is Bill Alfonso and the Purple Haze. Well, we hear the Purple Haze kind of squealing or screaming or something here and uh, looking over at Kevin Sullivan periodically for more instructions. Kevin, Kevin Sullivan there just keeping his eye on every move the Purple Haze makes. Uh, you know, Gordon, these nerve centers, these nerve pressure points on many men, are, they can cause so much pain and partial paralysis of the body and it seems like the Purple Haze knows just where to go for these nerve centers. No question about that. And obviously... Uh... Angelo Master Jr. picking up uh, a lot of information here about the tactics of uh, the Purple Haze and Kevin Sullivan. And uh, again, for those of you who might have missed it or tuned in late, Angelo Mosca Jr. broke the hold of the pro and uh, so has picked up $1,000. And I'm sure he'll have good use for that. Well, I believe that really took some wind out of the sails of uh, one Mr. J.J. Dillon. He has always had so much confidence J.J. Dillon is lacking $1,000. Looks like uh, Barry Windham is coming on pretty strong with the Purple Haze. The Purple Haze seems to be in a lot of trouble with coming back with a chop across the forehead. The Haze, of course, has been uh, throughout the Orient much of his life. I know that. Uh -uh. And it is uh, the Purple Haze outside the ring after Barry Windham punishing him outside the ring itself and uh, smashing him into uh, chairs outside. Well, once the Purple Haze gets a man in trouble, Gordon, he just doesn't let up. He's going to make sure that uh, Barry Wyndham stays injured, that he never has a chance to recuperate. The Purple Haze just has so much power in his upper body and his entire body. And 
Wyndham in a lot of trouble here as the Purple Haze continues to punish him. Wyndham has been... Ah, Wyndham now scoring to the midsection. The Purple Haze with the headbutt. That puts the Haze back to the uh, canvas as well. And both of these men in a grueling battle. Well, it seems like the Purple Haze uh, was able to regain his senses coming back with a headbutt, which partially uh, even obscured his vision. Looks like a karate uh, chop right through the throat on uh, Barry Wyndham there. Angelo Musk, uh, Junior, nodding in agreement to that, buddy, that uh, that's exactly what uh, the problem is out here right now. We've got the Purple Haze really trying to gain total control over this situation, and it is uh, Devin Sullivan. Ah, good move by uh, Barry Wyndham. He ducks to one side. Wyndham fires to the midsection. Wyndham catches him now with a good forearm to the side of the jaw. It's the Purple Haze back to the canvas once again, and Barry Wyndham. That elbow of Wyndham's already a severe mat burn on that elbow, or else he uh, caught it when he uh, hit that steel pole outside of that chair, but... Uh, Wyndham having problems, and now Wyndham beginning to open up with some very heavy artillery on the Purple Haze. Well, it seems like right now Kevin Sullivan's outside the ring, that Kevin Sullivan's screaming and hollering, and he saw his man in a lot of trouble, and he's just shouting instructions. Right now, it looks like the uh, Purple Haze is in control of the match at this time. Here's Barry Wyndham. He misses, whoa! Barry Wyndham caught the Purple Haze, the Purple Haze. Now it's... Uh, Kevin Sullivan driving in, and it is, uh, ooh, Barry Wyndham and Kevin Sullivan both outside the ring, and uh, it is uh, Barry Wyndham catching him once again. Barry Wyndham now moving back against Kevin Sullivan, but it's really two on one, and uh, it's Barry Wyndham in even more trouble. The referee calling for the bell, and uh, Sullivan is down. Now it is... Uh, he caught that. Uh, his hand, Gordon. He caught very definitely caught uh, Angelo Mosca Jr. Uh, with something in the throat, and uh, it appears that he's hemorrhaging. I. Well, here here comes Angelo Mosca Sr. There was just. Seemed like the purple haze came from the back there with something in his hand, some kind of a spike, and caught out young Angelo Mosca in the throat. He's hemorrhaging. Welcome back to Lone Star Wrestling. Right now, in progress, you're seeing a match between Mark Lewin and the Samoan chief Siva Afa, a feud that's been going on for several weeks. This particular match, no stopping for cuts or blood. The referee stationed outside the ring, so one man will emerge victorious at the end of this ongoing feud. Of course, maniac Mark Lewin, well known to fans all across the United States. This man uh, has been under the influence of several people, some... Uh, say Kevin Sullivan has a lot to do with this particular gentleman's career and bending him towards a, uh, shall we say, and I really hate to use the word, but towards a more satanic outlook on life. A lot of his opponents, of course, claim that Mark Lewis is uh, involved in some kind of a trance. He's in some kind of hypnotic state inside the ring. That's, that's open to question. However, one thing is certain that Mr. Lewin uh, is possessed with very high tolerance of pain. One would almost say he's impervious to uh, a lot of the assaults that would take a normal wrestler and certainly not only send him into defeat, but put him out of the profession altogether. Lewin, as you can see in his right hand now, some kind of foreign object that he removed from his trunks earlier in this match. He's opened a, a tremendous gash on the head of Siva Afa. This man having trouble even making his feet as Lewin closes in. The big karate right hands have become the trademark of maniac Mark Lewin throughout the years. Mark Lewin against Siva Afa today on Lone Star Wrestling. Just one of the great stars that you'll be seeing in the next couple of weeks. You'll be seeing stars like King Kong Boozer Brody, Tommy Rich, Chavo Guerrero, and many, many more right here on Lone Star Wrestling. Lewin now with the advantage, an open choke on Siva Afa in the corner, but since the referee is stationed outside the ring, he cannot interfere in this match. He cannot call for a break. His only purpose in this match is to count a pinfall or to hear one man submit. Certainly, uh, from the reputation that Siva Afa has, not something very likely that he'll do. Mark Lewin, uh, no matter what state he's in, the man does not give up. He's a 
almost diabolical machine inside the ring. You see Siva Alpha now catching you in a good shot. Now Alpha has got control of whatever it was that Mark Lewin had pulled out of his trunks earlier in this match. And Lewin here getting a little taste of his own medicine at the hands of Siva Alpha being uh, thrust into the throat with that uh, object from his trunks. And now Lewin jumped straddled over the top rope of the ring. And as you can see, Mark Lewin in a very bad way today on Lone Star Wrestling from the dressing room comes Kevin Sullivan, the mentor and guide of Mark Lewin. As uh, Siva Alpha turns to battle Kevin Sullivan, Mark Lewin now joining up on Siva Alpha and Angelo Mosca Jr. into the ring to help his friend Siva Alpha both. Kevin Sullivan and Mark Lewin beat a hasty retreat. More to come this week on Lone Star Wrestling. Well, now we go with Lord Humongous as Slick brings him into the ring against Dusty Woods here on Lone Star Wrestling. We hope you enjoyed that look at the maniac Mark Lewin and Chavo Guerrero. Two stars that you'll be seeing coming into the near future here on Lone Star Wrestling. They're on their way even as we speak. Now, the Lord Humongous, managed by Slick. We saw him, uh, we saw a couple of Slick's creations just a couple of minutes ago. As, uh, with Mad Max and Hacksaw Higgins, but now, as the Lord Humongous totally annihilates Dusty Woods, Slick is having to be visibly and physically restrained by the security guards here at ringside. Apparently, he finds uh, their behavior and the fans' behavior a little bit questionable. Well, Lord Humongous is taking some licks, but he's not moving. Dusty Woods is not moving him, I'll tell you. There's a big knee. That doubles up Dusty Woods. Of course, the Lord Humongous going to work on Dusty Woods as uh, his manager continues his tirade at ringside. And certainly when you've got a, what, what else can you call it except a thing like the Lord Humongous at your command, you don't have to take a lot of garbage from a lot of people. Humongous has Dusty Woods up. Remember, that's about 230 pounds. He's picking up with his swim like a paper sack. And again, as we've seen, as a matter of fact, every time we've seen Humongous, I've yet to see anybody who's gotten anywhere with him inside the ring, see? He's fought a lot of the greats, including Bob Sleepan and many more, and they all have come up short against the Lord Humongous. Now, Humongous Dusty Wood tries to knock him back. He doesn't even move the big guy as Humongous just comes right back after him. Dusty Wood's a fine athlete in his own right, but uh, he's seriously overmatched against the Lord Humongous. A vicious clothesline from Humongous, and now going in behind his man for uh, what Slick calls the chainsaw. Uh, a maneuver that, frankly, has literally had everyone carried out of the arena every time the Lord Humongous has applied it. Well, he's got Dusty Woods in a bad way. In fact, there's the bell. Slick comes into the ring, and he's keeping the referee away as Lord Humongous has locked it on. The chainsaw locked on by Lord Humongous, and it's all over for Dusty Woods, and he's in really bad pain. If uh, we could have had a serious injury, as a matter of fact, Woods may have sustained an injury. As Slick kept the referee from breaking the hold, uh, Humongous just kept applying the pressure, and now Slick with his own gesture of disdain at Dusty Woods, leads his victorious man from the ring. Lord Humongous, very impressive as he wins it here on Lone Star Wrestling. Stay tuned because Mad Max coming up next. The all-new Lone Star Wrestling at the City Coliseum here in Austin on Sunday night, April the 21st, 8 o'clock starting time. Main event. El Madrill teams up with Hacksaw. Take on Mr. Piledriver, Bob Sweet Tannen, and Ricky Vera. The tag team titles on the line as the Maoris from New Zealand defend that title against Rick Casey and Chicky Star. The midgets, Little Coco and Little Tokyo, batted out. Mad Max will be there to meet Dusty Woods in one other exciting match. That's Lone Star Wrestling Sunday, April the 21st, 8 o'clock at the City Coliseum here in Austin. El Madrill. Sweet Dad, what happened? I was supposed to meet you in Austin a couple of weeks ago. Why didn't you show up? You know why he didn't show up? Because he's afraid of El Madrill. 
Okay, that's even better, sweet tan. The only way you would sign a match is if you got a partner. And who did you get of all people? Enrique Vera. You know, your pile driver means nothing to me. Your partner means nothing to me. And you know what? Nothing and nothing equals nothing. And I tell you what, my partner Hacksaw, he's about 10 feet tall and about 500 pounds. I got no worries. I got no problems. Sweet Tan, try to pile drive that man. You can't even be able to pile drive me. How are you going to pile drive Hacksaw Higgins? Good luck, Sweet Tan. And as far as your partner's concerned, I can't understand this promotion. I done beat every Mexican wrestler they brought to me, and they keep bringing them back. Okay, fine. This time, I told my partner, Mr. Higgins, let's get rid of this Mexican man once and for all, put him in a little box, send him back to Mexico. We won't have to ever worry about seeing him again. Oh, yeah, Sweet Tan. Remember the wrath of the pile driver. Put it on me first, and then you can come out and say, remember the wrath of the pile driver. Put it on me, baby. You'll never do it in Austin. You'll never do it anywhere. So don't even think about it. Slick is back, and this is the man we didn't know when he came into the ring earlier. We found out who he was, Mad Max. He comes off with all that uh, metal gear, and Mad Max is in there against Manuel Villalobos here on Lone Star Wrestling. Look at this. And certainly if Mad Max was anything like the other uh, gentlemen that inhabit the stable of Slick, we're uh, looking at a very serious individual in the ring right now as uh, Mad Max continues to pummel on Manuel Villalobos. Villalobos, an absolutely uh, up and coming, rising young star, the 1984 Rookie of the Year, has not even had a chance to get anything going against Mad Max. Well, Mad Max grabs Villalobos, bounces him off the rope. There's a knee and doubles Villalobos up, sends him down to the mat. Mad Max lays one in a, hey, this guy's big, gotta be about 275, 80 pounds. Maybe more, six foot five, six foot six. Yes, Bill Lobos by the hair. I think uh, at this point in time, Slick may have uh, what's got to be a historical thing in the sport. Probably the largest crew or stable, shall we call it, of any manager in the sport with the 300 pounds plus of the Mad Max. Hacksaw Higgins and the Lord Humongous. What an army this man Slick controls. Boy, he does that. There's a knee right in the midsection. The matter of old Bill Lobo Slick just walking around the ring. I don't know what he's got planned. Here comes Bill Lobo off the rope. Oh! Mad Max flips him high in the air. Look at Mad Max use that low for leverage, stomps him across the chest, now across the shoulder. And Mad Max has not slowed down a minute since the onset of this match. He has been all over Manuel Villalobos, and uh, Manuel hasn't even had a chance to get started. He's absorbed a tremendous amount of punishment in the last couple of seconds. Todd Johnson very carefully questioning Max about some of his uh, tactics inside the ring. And now, Mad Max, a vicious clothesline that almost, uh, it's got a seriously injured Villalobos. And now, wait, Steve, Mad Max has gone for the chainsaw. Oh, yeah, the Cobra, the chainsaw, whatever you want to call it. Mad Max does it here to Manuel Villalobos. And let's see, when he breaks, the bell's already sounded. Mad Max finally breaks. So Slick comes into the ring, and he's had a great night with Lord Humongous, Mad Max, and everybody else. Rick, it's been a great one. And certainly uh, Slick has gotten something going with that, uh, with that chainsaw hold, as he calls it. We've seen Mad Max and the Lord Humongous with it. Another trademark of this controversial young man. Well, it's been an exciting hour, ladies and gentlemen. That is the first one for Lone Star Wrestling. I want to tell you, next week, Bobby Duncan returns. Plus, we'll be seeing in action King Kong bruiser brody as well as rick casey returning to the mat wars and one of those finest wrestlers ever come up from south of the border the former world champion Perro aguayo also ladies and gentlemen you'll see mad max back that big hacksaw higgins will be there and much much more so lone star wrestling the biggest and the best right here every week rick's been the great see for the first edition of lone star wrestling it's a big mark in my heart and i'm certainly proud to be associated with it a lot of great action to come on Lone Star.
are us. Yeah, next week for Rick Stewart, this is Steve Stack saying so long for Lone Star Wrestling.